My name is Hardik Singh, and I am a product manager at Heavy Robotics. In this video, we will talk about virtual springs that are created using impedance control. This is a really useful application that puts together a lot of the different concepts we have talked about throughout this playlist. Impedance control is all about playing with forces in the Cartesian space, in 3D space that we live in, instead of just the joint space. So what that means is that instead of just controlling the stiffness of the joint at the base or the shoulder or the elbow, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to see three different ways in which you can actually control the stiffness of, uh, of, of, of multiple parts of the system together uh, to create stiffness in this direction or this direction at a given point or at a given rotation. And that's what it means to set that in the 3D space, in the Cartesian space that we live in, instead of just at each joint level. This is going to put together a lot of the concepts that we've talked about. And I'm going to get started by having us use impedance control to hold uh, the end effector of the arm at a given position. Let's see what that looks like. So currently, I can set this arm to wherever I want it to be. Uh, keep in mind that the impedance control will be around the point at the base of this link. So this additional link is here for me to hold, but we're, we're, and it will show which way uh, the final orientation of the arm is, but the actual ending position is at the center of this link at the base where this actuator connects to the link. Keeping that in mind, if I choose to uh, this position and I activate impedance control, what's going to happen is that as I move the remainder of the arm, we're going to create a stiffness such that the arm is going to stay at this position. So let me, for example, push this around. You can see how this final position is staying the same. And I can do what I want to move this arm around, but there I am experiencing a stiffness that prevents me from moving the arm away from keeping the end effector at this position. And that's really powerful. And I'll talk about an application or two at the end of this video. But this is where it's holding a position in 3D space. And I can move the joints around, but it will hold that position. Next up, if I switch over to another type of impedance control, uh, and when I say another type, I mean just another way to implement the, the concept of impedance control. We have uh, the, an opportunity to create a virtual spring, this time not to hold at a certain, certain position, but to hold an orientation of the end effector. So the end effector, once I set it to, for example, let's see, let's see, if I send the end effector to always be facing, let's try the camera and I've activated the impedance control, I can move the arm around, but it'll always remain facing the camera. And that's another example of how the stiffness I've created is in the rotation of the, or the orientation of the end effector. So even if I move this around, it's gonna make sure that the final pipe stays facing that one orientation. And that, and that again, is another really useful way to show how impedance control can be used to create stiffness in the Cartesian 3D space. Finally, we have, uh, I'm gonna cut this demo as well, and I'm gonna show a final type of impedance control, which is the impedance control where we actually mix the two that we've seen so far. So let's get this running. In this demo, what we're going to see is that it's going to try and hold uh, nearly at a given position, but it's going to hold that orientation as well. So it will, if I put this here, it'll hold this at this orientation, and it will only it will restrict me from moving around other than in what we call like the Z plane of the end effector. So in this plane, so if, if the end effector was pointed this way in line with this pipe, it would only be able to move in this direction. If I put it here, it would only be able to move in this direction. Let's see what that looks like. If I activate the impedance control while looking at you, this is it, uh, I can set the gains to see how stiff uh, I want to be, and I can also affect the impedance control to, to change the, the damping, the different coefficients, how uh, to make it this virtual spring that much more stiff. But if I move this around, it's keeping me at that position while allowing me only to move in the Z plane. It's only moving back and forth. And it, it, there's some tuning to be done here. You can see how as I'm completely moving the elbow in a different orientation, 
it's sticking to this z, z uh, axis and it's restricting that motion to that uh, along and around that z axis so these are just three examples of how impedance control can be used to create stiffness in 3d space and uh, it's using the same base tools underneath uh, such as like the different principles of forward inverse kinematics that we talked about a little bit of the trajectory generation with different constraints and we set those constraints in this impedance controller but uh, let's talk about how one of the applications that it can be used. So what, an application you could imagine is that if I had a pipe here uh, and I wanted to have this arm restricted to go around the, the, uh, the orientation of the pipe. So I could create a virtual model of the pipe and I could create it so that if I put this on the pipe and the pipe was bending this way, it would it would create stiffness along that plane so i couldn't move away from the pipe and i couldn't like go keep, take the end effector off the pipe but i would be able to restrict myself to follow the, the surface and the other cool thing about impedance control is that you're not restricted from putting uh controllers on top of controllers and what that means is that if i was to continue with the pipe analogy follow the surface of the pipe i could put another type of virtual spring that affects how much uh, force this end effector applies onto the pipe. So not only am I restricting it to this 3D shape here, I could also be restricting it along a given axis at the same time. And so in, in, in applying a technology into the real world, impedance control can allow us to really be compliant to the world in the ways we want to be and be stiff or create impedance in the directions that we want to also. And together that allows us to uh, create more compliant, but also uh, to create solutions that adhere to the surroundings uh, around the robot. And, and that's really powerful. So this is another example of how you can use the tools put together to create a very uh, strong controller.